All right, guys, we had so many topics that we wanted to discuss today. But first, a breaking news story. Obviously, you have probably seen that I am currently engaged in a tweet, also known as a Twitter beef, with no one other than Cardi B. So here to unpack all of this drama with me, I have the alleged Harvard graduate, definitive hip-hop expert, and Cardi B historian, Ben Shapiro. <laughs> Also, give it up for comedian Nicole Arbor. And former police officer and author of Beaten Black and Blue, my good friend, Brandon Tatum. Now, before I'm going to let anybody on this panel speak, I want to make sure we are not coloring the opinions of people at home. I want them to see a clip of a Grammy performance that is a topic of discussion today. Cardi B uh, did a Grammy performance with Megan the Stallion, and here we have it. Let's watch that performance. All right, guys, um, I know uh, the lyrics, we don't even need her to finish. We know Ben knows these lyrics inside and My out. I'm <laughs> so good. So good. I am going to start with you, Nicole. Ladies yes. first, okay? So CNN ran with the headline that this was a sex-positive performance. So obviously, <laughs> women watching this should be inspired because this is sex-positive. So I want to ask you, Nicole, yes. how you were inspired by this sex Positivity. It feels like herpes positive and chlamydia positive. I was inspired to get an STD test, but also get a sack of wands. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> like, it's not, no, that, I, I don't feel like this is a positive portrayal of women. This is the same ish we've seen for so many years. And I think positivity for women would be going the other way. Be hot, be sexy, but be something else too. That's what we should be selling. So just to quickly recap, the way that the feud started with uh, me and Cardi was that she saw a clip of me on Tucker Carlson. He picked the topic, obviously, and asked me to similarly respond. And I, I said that this, um, to me, felt like a corrosion of culture, which is something that we talk about often, mm -hmm. uh, Brandon, as particularly in black America, we talk about culture. So I'm going to try to put you on the spot to defend Cardi. So I said it was a corrosion of culture. Can you spin this for me and tell me how actually, no, this is the opposite. This is us uplifting uh, culture and black America. That's very difficult to do. Um, <laughs> I think if you want to ruin a culture, if you like nasty women and you don't want your children to grow up and get married and be successful, this would probably be a good idea for you to have and, and have them watch it. But Cardi B is, that was nasty. It was disgusting, not only visu visibly, but it's disgusting to the growth in the, in the production of the, the black community. Mm. Um, and communities anywhere, you know, you can't, you can't go around uh, flaunting your stuff with a fake booty and claiming you got the WAP when your husband cheating on you and leaving you. So hey. I, guess, I guess the WAP ain't, I guess it ain't WAPing that good. But. <laughs> I don't want to get into that, but yeah, I, I, think I mean, it's we can get into that because me and her apparently got into absolutely everything right. on Twitter, yeah. so we will definitely go there. But first, I think we need to have Ben Shapiro live read one of Cardi B's tweets. Ooh. He is a Cardi B historian, <laughs> as you guys know. So let's pull up one of the tweets that Cardi sent my way. Um, ben, I am Cardi B. Ib. <laughs> Matter of fact, I'm just going to thank Candy. She put my performance on Fox News, giving it more views that boosted the views on YouTube and is counting towards my streams and sales. Emoji. <laughs> Capitals, stream up and WAP, period, after space. <laughs> Remember, grown parents, only you can monitor what your kids watch. No one else, period. Uh, as our local hip hop expert, can you please interpret what Cardi B means? Uh, and and uh, can you also explain to us how this individual was selected to be uh, the person to interview then presidential candidate Joe Biden. <laughs> oh my. Uh, I mean, her Shakespearean brilliance is on full display in this tweet. The proper grammar, the incredible spelling, the use of the emoji, which you remember from King Lear, and the, <laughs> and the just incredible verbal play in which she engages. It, it truly is awe-inspiring. And all I can say is that a culture that can produce Cardi B as its high art that culture is going places. And I, t I couldn't agree with you more. And you know, Ben, you and I actually discussed something on your show uh, that I think is so relevant here. We talked about the gaslighting that the left tends to do to conservatives. And could you just explain that for viewers? Because it's so correct. So there's this game that, that folks in the media on the left, they love to play this game, where they will do something that is extraordinarily edgy or ridiculous or insane. And then if you notice this thing, they say, why are you even looking at that? Why are you even watching that? 
And it's sort of like the barista who, you know, it has the green hair and the, and the rings all over their face, like in their eyelid. And then you look at them like, what are you looking at? You, right? Because <laughs> you decided to make yourself look like this because you wanted attention. Cardi B was looking for attention. You gave her attention, but you weren't supposed to give her attention. Right. The only sort of attention she's supposed to receive is plaudits for the brilliance of her, of her words and the incredible genius of her feminism, which is absolutely indistinguishable, as far as I can tell, from pretty much every softcore pornography film from like 1987. More I've seen them all, you're right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, totally more appropriate. Uh, it, was, it was a pornographic performance. I don't think there's really any other way to say it. I called it degenerate, it was problematic. Um, but I do want to point out something because she was actually awarded last year Woman of the Year. So my question is, what are we doing wrong? Bruce Jenner Nicole? must be mad. Uh, Kayla Jenner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. What are we doing? We. I don't feel like the people here are doing much wrong. I think that this is what's right. Is that we have literally is we have to sit there and say you guys are going crazy and we're not coming to play. So yeah, I, I just think the more that we point out how ridiculous all of this is, and all we really have to do is put on some clothes half the time to show that. <laughs> and you know, if any of you see my booty on the internet, I'm sorry, that wasn't on purpose, that was leaked. But uh, we just have to be the counterculture. That's what I think we're doing. So something that I thought that was genuinely interesting in this back and forth with Cardi, and I, I'll direct this to you, Brandon, was that she kept tweeting out random things to prove that she had the moral high ground. Um, and, and one of those things was she said, well, you know, at least I'm not, I'm paraphrasing here, but at least I'm not Dr. Seuss, uh, who's a racist. She actually tweeted, you know, something to that effect. And then she said, at least I'm not the people that went into the Capitol building. So before you respond, I do want to show this clip of who exactly Cardi B is. And here is her talking about what she's done in life. I had to go straight. I had to go, oh yeah, you want to me? Yeah, 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 let's go to this hotel. And I drug niggas up and I robbed them. That's what I used to do. So first, just for clarity, because I actually don't speak that kind of English. Ben, what did she exactly say there? Or do we even... Um... My understanding <laughs> is that what she was saying is that she used to take men home, uh, Johns, apparently, prospective Johns, my understanding of this particular quote, and, uh, and then she would then drug them and rob them, hmm. uh, which last I checked was criminal behavior. Right. You, you are incredible at what you do. I just <laughs> want to say that. Uh, uh, can you explain this to me? So she actually made fun of me for a while, by the way, for saying, look at you, Candace. And she uh, tweeted out this video of me making my husband a sandwich. I've done that before, and I will probably do that well into the future. Um, but, you know, this, uh, I guess she treats men better. Yeah, man, it's, you know, it's, it's interesting that you're going to keep your husband because you treat him with respect. You cook him meals. That's the way I think that wives should do. They should respect their husband and love them. And what we see Cardi B doing is, you know, drugging people and, and acting out of character. And that's why she's, she don't have a husband at this point. But I think this is, like I said, I go back to this being a degenerate culture. It's sad that we propped her up as somebody of excellence, somebody who should be touted. Women, young women should be listening to her. Mm -hmm. that's, it's a very sad day in America when that's, when that's our standard. I mean, I really feel bad for Cardi, man. I know you, you wrecked her online and she deserved every minute of it. Multiple times. But she, but it's very sad. It's very sad. I, 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 I really pray that she wake up and that she really um, come to grips with living the life that she really want to live. And right. I think that's because she really want to be you. I'm gonna be honest. She really I, want a husband. I think he's right. She want a family. Yep. She really want to get out of that stripper life. She want to get out of that ghetto hood stuff. But they keep drawing her back. But I, I'd say people like you um, are responsible for waking her up. No matter what she say she's doing or what she's tweeting at you, I think she's really being affected in a positive way about, you know, based on the things that you've exposed her on. Yeah. yeah. And I, I do want to also say, it's remarkable to me that in this time of cancel culture where everybody gets canceled, that the woman who went on to social media and admitted that she drugged and robbed men was able to perform main stage at the Grammys and also receive an award for Billboard Woman of the Year. How does that happen in, in cancel culture? So my, what I really think is that what we have now is not a culture and then a counterculture. Instead, what we have is a culture and then an anti-culture. What I mean by anti-culture is an entire wing that has decided that they are just going to tear down all of the institutions of tradition. All of our traditional culture must be torn down. And if you are on the side of the anti-culture, you can literally do whatever you want. You can, you can say whatever you want. You can be as bad a person as you want because, again, you are trying to tear down the institutions. And by tearing down these institutions, you're providing some sort of newfound freedom. 
if this is what freedom looks like to you, I don't think that that's what looks like a fulfilling life to most people, but uh, I guess that's what uh, some people want to push. Yeah, and I think I have to have the hope that the majority of Americans watching this performance were equally as disgusted, mm -hmm. and that for whatever reason, the mainstream media is trying to convince us that this is okay, this is sex positive, but your average American is not sitting there going, this is the direction that I want the world to go into, which is why I said to her, Cardi, there's not a single person that can look you in the face and say that they hope their daughters turn out like you. And I think that has to hit home for someone like her who has a young daughter, and I hope that it does. But obviously, I do want to get to this because I know a lot of people are watching the show to see whether or not I was serious when I said I was suing Cardi B. Um, for those of you that did not know how the situation quickly escalated, Cardi then shared a photoshopped tweet of something that I did not write ever um, and claimed this tweet was real. I mean, this is obviously so fake. It must have been put together by an 11-year-old with basic Photoshop skills. Um, Cardi but, made it and you know that. Yeah, I know, right? I'm like, on. Someone on her team, maybe, yeah. I don't know. But she tweeted this out. And not only did she, did she tweet this out and, let's say, she perhaps fell for it, thought it was real, she then doubled down and said that she thought that she, that she saw me tweet this, that it was real, and that 100% uh, this is true. I mean, Ben, you're a lawyer. Help us, help us out here. So, first rule in law, don't do stupid. Like, don't, <laughs> do, like, don't do that, okay? So, especially once you've been reminded that you are now performing a defamatory action against a private citizen, because you're a public figure, right. uh, but your brother is not a public figure. Uh, and, uh, and as soon as you warned her, Cardi, this is fake, and she doubled down, she's now put herself squarely in line for some actual liability, which is about the stupidest thing that you can do. But again, I, I, again, for a woman of Cardi B's imminent, just incredible intellectual eminence to fall into this trap, I have to say I was, I was disappointed. <laughs> And it's one of those things where, of course, because I instantly called my lawyer, and I just, because it was just incredulous to me that she didn't just double down, she tripled down, she quadrupled down. She was like, this is 100% real. I saw this tweet happen. And I just, you know, on the one hand, obviously, I'm angry because, yes, my brother's a private citizen. My husband is also a private citizen. But on the other hand, it's, it just says something really sad. Um, you know, it's like, who is in her corner? If you're not going to be smart, at least hire smart people around you to say this is a bad move. Because beyond them being a private citizen, this should meet the actual malice standard, which for those of you that don't know, as public figures, people can really say whatever they want about us, and unfortunately, we have to prove an actual malice standard. I told her it was Photoshopped, yeah. right? She knew it was Photoshopped, and she continued to perpetuate this, so um, just as an update, we are deadly serious. We are suing Cardi B, um, so I mean, maybe one day on. I will. Yeah. I hope that one day yeah. I can come to your new home, and it will be the house that WAP built. <laughs> Exactly. So one day I will be the uh, an investor in WAP. I will be a partial <laughs> owner of WAP. We are out of time. Everyone, please be sure to follow these guys, Ben, Nicole, and Brendan, on social media. Their handles are on the screen below. And let us know what topics you want us to cover next week. We'll be right back.